Hey there, Nick Genetakis here. In this video, we're going to use a combination of the diff tool, process substitution, and we're going to pipe together a couple of Unix commands to solve a real world problem. Now, the takeaway of this video is, you know, your problem probably won't be the same as mine, but all the strategies that we're about to use can be applied to whatever problems that you have. So before we get into the code, let me just go over uh, the situation here. So I have this podcast going on here, running in production.com. And, you know, in a previous video, I mentioned, uh, you know, how you can break up a lot of things into multiple columns using like a CSS selector. So I'll leave a link to that if you want to check that out. But the focus of this video is around these tags. So you can see here that I do have, you know, a lot of tags. There's like 150 of them. And if I go into any one of these podcast episodes, you can see here that each episode has a tag. And if I click something like Ubuntu there, you know, we can get a list of all the episodes and interviews that are tagged Ubuntu. You know, some of these episodes have, uh, you know, less tags than others. This one has quite a few, uh, whatever. You get the idea, right? This one has a few. Now, the issue here is if I go to my code editor here and I do a search for, you know, it doesn't really matter uh, what episode I take a look at, but you can see here when I create a new podcast episode, you know, this is basically the file that I need to create. And when I want to tag some stuff, now, like this is what I do, like I have this tags property and then I have uh, what you see here, like one line for each tag and they're all formatted in the same way. Now, the problem is, you know, I have a lot of tags now, there's over 150 of them and it is so easy to forget like the naming conventions of some of these tags. For example, like is code deploy really one word or is there supposed to be a hyphen in the middle? Uh, that's especially uh, troublesome with things like I have this one tag, uh, GitLab CI, right? Is it GitLab CI or is it GitLab dash CI? You know, those are things you can just forget. So what I wanted to do was create a script that will go through all of these tags. And then, uh, and this is also like the second half of the story here, uh, the way those tag pages work is, you know, I have a corresponding, uh, corresponding markdown file for each of these tags. For example, you know, if I open up this Flask one here, then uh, this is what one of those tags file look like. Uh, you can see here the tag name uh, on disk is flask.md and the actual tag name is over here. And then there's like a URL because, you know, if you go and scroll down here and you click one of these tags, then it just opens up that URL. You know, I'm try I try to make this as, like, as easy as possible to uh, like check out what tech stack someone is using in the podcast. But you can see here that there's like many ways for things to get screwed up. Typos can happen and uh, all sorts of things like that. Like here, you can see like I have GitLab CI, there is a dash there in between that. And uh, if you look at the file itself, you know, that's the tag name. So what I wanted to do was write a script that will go through, you know, all of these file names and then also go through uh, all of the tags for all of the episodes and, and interviews and, and make sure all of these things line up. And uh, that's what we're gonna go over in this video. So let's go ahead and take a look here at a shell script that I wrote. And uh, this shell script is basically broken up into two halves. We're gonna go over the bottom half a little bit later. So let me just push that off the screen for now so we can focus on the top half. So the interesting thing here is the diff command. Now I've done a couple of videos about diff in the past, but the TLDR here is you can pass in two files like file one and file two. And the diff command is gonna tell you what's different about those files. So maybe file one has a couple of new lines, file two, maybe it has some extra characters somewhere. Very handy tool to use. But in our case, you can see here that we're not really passing in two specific files to diff. What we're really doing here is we're passing in the output of running other commands as input to diff, and diff is going to understand to do this because we are using process substitution. We're effectively converting these uh, commands into files, at least at a high level, I guess. So I guess the best way to explain this one would be to uh, crack open the bash manual for process substitution. And if we take a look here, and it's only a one liner that we really need to read, but we can see here that process substitution takes a process's output and refers to it as a file name. So the syntax for that is less than sign. And then inside the parentheses, we run whatever command that we want. And uh, that's exactly what we're doing over here. So on the left-hand side, right, we're doing this loop over files and we'll go over this in a second here. But on the right-hand side, we're also just doing uh, another uh, base name here on, on all the tags. So the way this works is uh, kind of neat. And actually on Stack Overflow, I found a fun little thing that you can run to basically get like the most minimal example here. So if we run echo, and what are we doing? We are echoing the output of running echo using process substitution. 
then we get different file descriptors here for each one. So we can, you know, even do this like a third time if we wanted to, and we would get a third one. So the output of these commands are basically, uh, I guess, file descriptors on disk. I'm not really 100% on how that works, but, uh, you know, it works in the end for this use case, and that's all I care about. <laughs> to be honest, like, you know, I don't care about going into that much detail about knowing how it works internally. I just want to use it, and uh, yeah, that's what we're doing here. So the basic idea is I'm going to loop over all of my posts inside this post directory. So just to be clear here, well, if I uh, bring up some nerd tree on the sidebar, I have this post directory, and inside of there, you know, I have a podcast directory and an interviews directory. And inside the podcast one, you know, these are all of... Uh, all of the podcasts. So if I go there and, uh, you know, we only limit this to be files because technically, you know, in this post directory, there are interviews and, you know, podcast here as folders, you know, we don't want to include that in the output. We only want to get files. Then what we're going to do is we are going to use said range expressions. And I've done another video on that one in detail, which I'll link to in the description. But the very, very TL, TL, TLDR uh, about this one is, uh, you can actually use said to take like a specific area of a file, let's say this tags property, and read it until it reaches some other point in the file, such as the title property, and grab everything in between and return that. So for example, if I go to one of these podcast episodes, uh, you can see here that there is a tags property, right? Uh, let me also, eh, it's it's fine for now. Uh, in this tags property, you know, there's all the tags there. And then eventually we reach this title property and every single episode uh, for the podcast or interview is exactly set up like this. So this said range expression is really going to grab everything in between there, including uh, the tags property and title property itself. So what we're going to, and actually, I guess the easiest way to explain this one, since we're using pipes here, you know, I might as well break this down and we can just go over it in the terminal. So if I do this, uh, I'm going to have to replace this file with like a hard coded file. So if I go to like the posts here for a podcast and one of these episodes, I don't know, something from last month, maybe. No. Uh, yeah. Okay. Like this one doesn't really matter. Uh, there we go. So what we see here with this said setup is we get exactly uh, as mentioned, right? We get from tags down to title. And if we continue on uh, using Unix pipes here, we're doing some additional filtering on the output. And what are we doing? Well, we're only going to grep out lines that start with space, space, dash. And if we go back to down here, you know, this is all the tag lines, right? So if I rerun this command and I put in uh, grep there as a pipe, it's like now we only have a list of those tags. But this is a little bit messy, right? There's all sorts of extra characters that we don't want. So the last thing that I do is I use cut here to basically cut on the quote and then grab the second result. So if I copy this here and then rerun this command here with that. Also, let me just clear that just to make sure my head is not blocking things. Uh, I just noticed that now. But you can see here that uh, it totally, totally just chopped out everything that we don't want. And what we're left with is a list of tags. And uh, if we go back to the script here, you know, it's doing that for all the files. And then at the very, 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 very end, uh, we are doing a sort dash U just to make sure that all of our tags are sorted alphabetically. For example, uh, right now they are not, and, and that's by choice. But if I just do, you know, a sort dash U over here, then they will be sorted alphabetically. And that's going to make it very easy to diff things when they're sorted like this, because then, yeah, it'll be uh, very nice. So that takes care of the left half, right? That gives us a list of all the tags for all the files in there uh, because we're inside that loop, remember? And now the next uh, half, you know, the right-hand side, is to basically get a list of all the tags on disk in this one tags directory. So now uh, I guess I can run this one straight up on the command line and we can take a look. This is actually a really cool one. I didn't really know that uh, this base, well, I don't think I actually uh, copied that, sorry. There we go. Yeah, there we go. You can see the highlight happen. So if I paste it in here, uh, we get a complete list of all the tags here, right? All, I think there's like roughly 150 of them. Actually, let's see. And this is also Power of Unix Pipes. There we go, 152 of them. But uh, if you do here with dash S, it will actually say to basically filter out uh, that aspect of the file name just to give you back the base base name, right? So the reason base name is name base name is because like, you know, if you had like a whole entire path here, you know, it will still just give you the last part of it. 
And uh, you know, if you don't use the dash s here and you just run that, you know, it just gives you the file name itself, but it chops out, you know, the earlier parts of the path like like foo and bar. So this is actually quite nice here. If you actually do a search for base name dash dash help here, uh, you can see some more information about these flags. So the dash s is for suffix, you know, it removes a trailing suffix. Uh, implies dash a. To be honest, I found that this works without using dash a. I'm not really 100% on you know why this is in the docs like this. You know, if you let me know in the comments below, that would be very helpful. But it works in the end, and uh, that is very very cool uh, because this really simplified how I was doing it previously before I realized that I can do all of this with base name. So what I do here, you know, just like before, I do a sort u. We're still sorting it over here. And in the end, we just get a massive list of tags and they are diffed. Now, the way the diff command works is, you know, if you diff uh, two things here, like if I do, a, uh, and we're using process substitution again over here, you know, if I do something like the diff of my, I don't know, root directory and the diff of, I don't know, I guess like my home directory, you know, these are going to be very different, right? My root directory has all sorts of stuff like this in it, but my home directory, you know, has these uh, as well. Now, the interesting thing about this is, you know, if I run echo and I get the uh, exit code of the last run command, we can see here that the diff command basically failed, right? It has an exit code of one. You know, that means things were not the same. So if I rerun this command here and I make the diff to be identical, right? We're diffing the output of two things that are the same. And I do the same thing here. We can see that the exit code is zero. So what's really cool about this setup with this script is, uh, let me close this one out for now is, you know, I can run this as part of uh, like a con continuous integration setup with GitHub Actions. And if the diff is different, then the run is going to fail immediately and let me know. So actually now let's start taking a look here at uh, the second half. And uh, for that, you know, this is really just like an additional sanity check where I'm just making sure that every single tag file has all of uh, these properties, like a layout and a URL and a title. And what I'm doing is basically you know, I'm comparing the tag count to all of these individually just to make sure that they all line up. Because honestly, when you're dealing with a list of tags this big, you know, you know, if I go to like the Elixir one or whatever, uh, what I actually did was, um, you know, I did a major refactor on my tags at some point and the URL wasn't even something that was in this file. You know, it looked like this originally. And in the end, I went to all 152 tags and I added this URL property to each one. Now that was a, a pretty tedious process and pretty error prone because it's basically human driven. So if we go back to that check check over here, you know, this part uh, really helped me iron out, you know, the ones where I forgot to put the URL tag. And after I wrote this script here, you know, it found four mistakes. So that was pretty nice. Definitely was worth uh, writing it. You know, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, uh, this part, but it does work. And, uh, you know, I think that's sort of an important thing to note. So if I go to the running in production uh, GitHub repo over here, maybe it'll find it. Uh, you know, all of this code that we went over here is here. Uh, it is all open source. If you go to that test directory, you know, there's the shell script that we just took a look at. But uh, what I was just saying before about like, you know, this is sort of dirty, but it works. Uh, you know, off the top of my head, I'm not really sure how else to do this bottom half part in a little bit cleaner way. But uh, what we're looking at here, you know, the top part, this was not the first iteration of the script. So I'm a big fan of the philosophy of, you know, making it work, then making it nice, and then making it fast. So the first iteration of the script was, you know, a little bit hacky for the top part. Actually, I think if we go to uh, the list of commits here, yeah, like refactor tag check script here. Um, yeah, you can see like originally, you know, maybe there's a little bit easier way to uh, see this. Yeah, the, no, let's see, let's take a look here at the history. History, history, history. Yeah, I guess maybe I can look at it like this and we'll take a look here at the full file here. Uh, so we can see the old way that it was before. And uh, this is probably gonna make you cringe or throw up in your mouth a little bit because the top half was like way different. So, you know, before I knew that base name could do what it did, uh, I did all sorts of crazy things, like I cd'd into the tags directory, then I ls that, and the reason I did that was because I didn't want the tags part to be in the output of this, and then I just cut out uh, the specific uh, file name itself, like that's pretty horrible, but in the end it kind of worked, and for the first part here, what said, you know, I was still using that range expression, but then it's like, well, I trimmed out all white space, and then I like popped off 
uh, tags property and the title property using tail and head. And then, you know, I did the same cut as before. And like, it's pretty gross, like it totally worked. But when it came to making this video, you know, I kind of wanted to come up with a little bit of a better solution before recommending to do those things on video. You know, maybe what I have now for the, you know, the main final final version uh, isn't so much final final. Maybe there is a better way to do it. But for now, you know, I think this uh, second iteration of it is a lot more readable. You know, I'm very happy with it. Uh, if you see ways to, to improve this, please let me know in the comments below. That would be very helpful. Also, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.